Today, we're going to start our session off with two gentlemen. First one is Jesse Duguano, and the second one is Timo uh, Taras. I said that right? Perfect, perfect. So their talk today is going to be a touch of pawn, a touch of pawn. Um, it's going to be incredibly enjoyable. I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. If you have questions, I'm going to ask that you save them till the end. And when I say the end, I mean 315 and the villages. <laughs> so we're going to uh, have the villages kick off about 315. There's going to be a little bit small session around lunchtime, but we're really going to ask you guys to join the lightning talks instead. Uh, but 315, that's going to be a perfect time, MSRC Village, where you can ask your questions um, and steal their time away from them. All right. So, without further ado, let's get started. All right. Thank you, Bruce. My pleasure. Good morning, everyone. Um, like Bruce said, I'm Jesse. This is Timo. Hello. And um, today we're going to tell a story um, about attacking uh, Windows Hello fingerprint authentication. So, <clears throat> a little background. Um, oh about who we are. Uh, Timo, who are you? Uh, just a random guy from Finland, doing security research with Jesse, uh, working also on Alpine Linux stuff. Uh, for fun, reverse engineering, uh, catch the flags, and of course, sauna. <laughs> yep, lots of sauna. But Jesse, who are you? Uh, my name is Jesse Deguano. I, we, I, I've been doing uh, security research for uh, a little over 20 years. Um, again, similar interests, I think. Reverse engineering, vulnerability research, um, things like that. So um, what we're gonna talk about today was actually um, uh, some research that uh, we were handed by uh, Microsoft's Offensive Research and Security Engineering team, the Morse team. Um, and uh, the, 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 uh, the mission was to do vulnerability research on the Windows Hello fingerprint authentication. Um, so the top three fingerprint uh, sensors or embedded devices with, with fingerprint sensors for Windows Hello were chosen, selected originally by the Windows Hello team. And the goal was to see uh, how, how easy it would be or if it would be possible to bypass Windows Hello authentication. Um, there was another little element to this, and a lot of the background uh, research that, that there's been published about uh, biometric authentication and, and bio, biometric hacking, fingerprint hacking, is really around uh, creating fake fingerprints, cloning fingerprints, things like that. We actually did have a little bit of an element to that and, and had some interesting results, uh, kind of more less in our direct wheelhouse as far as Vuln research, but pretty fun. Um, that's not what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're talking specifically about software and hardware attacks um, against the, the embedded sensors and the host. Um, so this was a uh, black box, uh, so no source code available. All of these sensors are third party. Um, just had three brand new laptops. Uh, so our process involved a lot of reverse engineering, vulnerability research, um, hopefully exploit dev <laughs> if we could find some. Um, and that's, that's what we're going to talk about. I remember initially when, when you explained that we have potential here, I was like, hey, that's easy. Ten years ago, I, I did reverse one fingerprint reader. Uh, it's fake crypto, and it's just like scanning your fingerprint, and that's it. We just replay that. And we are yeah, just replay an image, yep. go on with our day. Um, that was kind of the, the initial thought, because a yep. lot of the, the state at some point was, was pretty, uh, pretty bad, right? Uh, so we'll see if that, <laughs> that assumption uh, played out. Um, the threat model that we're operating under, we are assuming physical access to a target. So um, something like a stolen or confiscated device, uh, an evil made attack, that kind of a, a, an attack vector. Um, and the goal, again, was to bypass Windows Hello authentication. Um, one, ex uh, one part of the model that was explicitly out of this threat model um, was like local privilege escalation using the uh, Windows Hello fingerprint subsystems to elevate as an authenticated user to you know system or something like that. That was not part of this research. Um, so targets, <clears throat> we these were again the top three uh, uh, Windows Hello devices that support fingerprint uh, authentication that were that were chosen for us. So 
Uh, the first one was a Dell Inspiron 15, which after digging into it, we found had a Goodix sensor. The, the, what was the next one, Timo? Uh, Lenovo ThinkPad D14S with the Synoptic sensor. Yeah. And then finally, the flagship Microsoft Surface Pro. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, the, the Surface Pro X uh, with the type cover, the fingerprint type cover. Uh, was, two. Yeah, so version two, yeah. Um, so, so those were our, our uh, primary targets there. Um, one common denominator among all of these targets is that they're all match on chip. What does that mean? So basically the assumption we had that it would scan your fingerprint and send it for the host to be analyzed, that that's actually happening on the sensor itself. Your fingerprint never leaves the sensor to the host computer. Instead, there's uh, some magic on how, how it does the matching. Uh, if it matches something already in the sensor, then it just sends to the host that, okay, this, this one I know, and then the Windows host can attach also some data on, on the fingerprint to identify who, who that person is. Right, so right out of the gate, um, our assumption of uh, the sensor actually just being a capture device that sends uh, to the host for, uh, for matching uh, is kind of blown out of the water, right? So mm -hmm. all of the matching is done on the chip, so if we're going to attack it, we need to attack the chip itself. Yeah. Yeah. Things do happen in 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and one little side, uh, the Windows Hello Enhanced Sign-In Security only supports this type of chip, um, as opposed to match on host, which is kind of the, the other type of sensor. Yeah. Um, so what is Windows Hello uh, Enhanced Sign-In Security? Um, there's a number of goals that, uh, that are stated by Microsoft. Um, first of all, uh, protecting biometric data in st at storage or uh, at rest. Uh, so the, like Timo said, biometric data fingerprints never leave the chips themselves. Um, so they're not sent to the host. So from a privacy perspective, that has uh, some protection. And there's also um, the, the intention of a secure communication channel, um, making sure that the sensor is actually, I mean, and the, the communication between the sensor and the host is, is secured in some ways. Um, this is made up by a number of different components, um, one of which is the secure device connection protocol. And that's a protocol that was designed by Microsoft for this specific uh, use in order to, uh, to prove the integrity of the sensor and things like that. So we're gonna go into a little bit more detail of what SDCP is. Um, Timo, you wanna yeah. kind of walk us through sure. that one? So SDCP is uh, a specification, uh, not a full USB protocol specification. It's just like having pieces that the device needs to do, uh, pieces of data that needs to go back and forth between the host and the sensor. The goal is to have end-to-end -end secure channel. So in, when the sensor boots up, it's actually uh, validating the firmware version, uh, calculating things, uh, generating a session key for the uh, runtime. And then SDCP will uh, define on how to do the crypto that uh, Windows can authenticate the sensor as running a valid firmware. And it also has a specification on how what needs to go together with the enroll and identify uh, actions so that it cannot be replayed at all uh, and it can be guaranteed that uh, it's a genuine connection and from valid trusted uh, sensor. Right, good. So yeah, it, it goes back to a root of trust a certificate that's issued by Microsoft. Um, and so uh, the firmware needs to be, uh, is, is validated for the integrity. So. Um, to, to, to make sure that the sensor is not just a spoof sensor, things like that. Um, and then also the communication between the enroll process, enrolling a new fingerprint, and identifying um, whether the fingerprint that's being presented is actually you know, an authenticated user, is all uh, signed, and, and there's some, uh, some crypto, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> there's, we'll walk through quickly um, kind of the, the process that SDCP, first there's a bootstrap process when the device is first plugged in or if in these cases they were all embedded devices. So when on boot up, uh, SDCP uh, creates a, a session with the target device, this target sensor. Um, so the Windows host um, does some initialization, makes a connection, uh, the, the sensor hashes the, uh, the current version of the firmware and makes sure that it's not been tampered with. Um, 
essentially there's a key agreement. Yeah. And yeah. then the sensor also signs with the Microsoft approved or signed certificate. Yeah. Everything that it's trusted. So once this process, we're, we're hand waving a lot around this process right now. I mean, to, to boil it down into a, a, a single slide with, uh, that you can read. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, this is essentially the, the process in order to build up a sec secure connection. Think of it as TLS handshake. Yeah. Without the encryption. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so here's the enrollment process. Um, essentially, uh, the Windows host uh, begins an enrollment. And the, again, there's kind of a dance between the, the Windows, uh, the, the host and the sensor, um, and uh, the, the user ends up enrolled uh, with fingerprints in the database of the sensor um, that's tied to an ID um, that, the, that the sensor knows about and that the Windows host knows about. There is, uh, there's a message, I mean, there's a Mac that's involved there that's tied to the, the session between the host and the sensor. Um, and so that there's integrity checking at that, at that point. Um, but then later, that Mac is, is used just as a static ID uh, for, that, for that template yeah. in the database. Yeah. And one of the big assumptions here is that this is the only way to generate IDs. So basically, neither one of these has direct con control what the ID will become, because it's basically a Mac of the nuns. Right. So Timo is foreshadowing some of, uh, <laughs> some of the things that are to come. But yes, there's an assumption here that the only way of getting, uh, getting a, a fingerprint into the database uh, and, and generating those IDs is through this authenticated process, right? Um, and how about identification? How does that work? So then uh, the Windows host will generate the nonce. The idea is that no one can replay anything because uh, the nonce is generated by the host. It's sent to the sensor. When it has actually captured the sample, done the database lookup, uh, it will take the ID, which used to be the Mac, now it's just the ID of the finger, uh, calculates a new Mac uh, based from that ID and the nuns and sends those back. So basically there's the finger ID and Mac uh, ensuring that it's not replayed. Yeah, so just to kind of um, uh, underscore that point, what is the purpose of that? Why does why that Mac happen? Two, two reasons. We cannot just record something and replay. Yeah. And also that we cannot just swap the sensor in between the communication. It also guarantees that the sensor is still the sensor we originally connected to. Right, exactly. So, um, so replay of, of like observing the bus and replaying it to the host is not able to be done. And same with kind of once that session's built up, it's tied to that, that initial session, right? Um, this is, uh, so this is all part of the Windows biometric framework, and we're not going to go into a lot of depth, but um, Timo, what do we want to highlight about, about where so, SDCP really is focused? Yeah, I wanted us to have this slide here, because in the biometric unit, that's the different APIs the biometric driver needs to implement. It has sensor, engine, and storage adapter. SDCP basically covers uh, the sensor and engine adapter in like pieces of those, but not fully. And the storage adapter side is basically not covered by SDCP at all, because this model is based on the match on host thing. You see the template databases in this diagram, actually an outside entity, whereas in match on chip uh, implementations, the template database is inside the sensor. Yeah, so we're, we're starting to see a picture of um, SDCP is actually overall pretty well designed, um, but it's pretty limited in scope as far as the overall interaction between the host and the sensor. Uh, so as vulnerability researchers, that's usually where we start focusing is where, where are those limitations, where, where's the, uh, the bounds of those limitations and, and the edges, right? Um, so just as a, as a kind of an, an explanation here, if you've logged into uh, to Windows before and uh, Windows Hello, with biometric auth, like a fingerprint auth, um, you see this icon um, giving you the option to log in with, with Windows. And this is actually, uh, uh, why does this do this? How, what enables this and why so is it useful for you us? You actually sat, see that icon only and only if the sensor is connected. So for example, on the surface, which has detachable tight cover, if it's removed, the fingerprint disappears because the sensor is not connected, so it's not available. And, uh, 
to make that happen, that's why the storage API uh, needs to know which fingerprint IDs are available at the moment. Right. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is actually, it's built in by design. The architecture actually uh, requires uh, the ability to query a sensor and, uh, and, and list out, essentially leaking out what, uh, what IDs the fingerprint sensor knows about. And that will become useful too later. Um, so again, uh, that was kind of you know, our initial analysis, um, uh, a lot of uh, initial reverse engineering to figure out what do we go after first, um, uh, identification of what bus, because we didn't know they're embedded, uh, embedded sensors, are they USB, are they uh, you know, some other unknown proprietary uh, you know, bus, um, reviewing the system configurations, things like that. Also, a quick assessment of the code quality. Um, of the different drivers to, to figure out what, um, what should be our priority as far as from a vuln, vuln research perspective, right? Um, and then going on in, and actually doing uh, the research on, on the different targets. So this is what we came up with as far as a priority list. Number one was the Dell, the Goodix sensor. Um, first of all, it supports uh, SDCP. Um, it, um, there's good support. For yeah, Linux, we right? We found out the Goodix people were nice enough. They implemented the whole thing in the Linux F, libf print. Uh, so we actually had a documentation of what the protocol is doing. Uh, it's clear text USB communication. And that really helped us on, on the initial analysis to see also what the Windows side is doing. Yes, and as good code sommeliers, we, we gave it the, smith, the sniff test and it definitely had some, uh, some smell yeah, um, as far as code quality. So was that was... Yeah, yeah, that, that kind of pushed it up as far as priority. We thought this might be a quick, easy win. Um, and then we moved on to the more, you know, the more difficult targets, right? Um, the other targets, like the, uh, the ThinkPad, um, uh, had limited Linux support. It also was supported by libfprint, but in a limited way. Uh, we also noticed that encrypted, the USB um, traffic was encrypted. So again, in order to inspect that, we'd have to actually uh, break yeah, the crypto or something like that. Basically, on Linux side, they use something completely different. If you put up Windows sniff, it's like everything's encrypted. It's yeah. completely different implementation. Yeah. Um, and then finally, the uh, the last one, which was the the Surface Pro, uh, we were a little bit scared about that one because um, first of all, uh, the what we were given or what our initial target was a Surface Pro X. So as an ARM Windows on ARM, the tooling is a little bit. Um, Funky, uh, so trying to get some of our tooling, even to just like lib, like USB mon and things like that, in order to watch the USB traffic, um, a little bit uh, a, a little bit more difficult. And then also, it's a you know it's a Microsoft flagship product. We yeah. yeah, and then the hardware connector completely proprietary. We cannot really also sniff the hardware side of things either. Right. So we'll come back to this, but here's a whoa, a Surface Pro, and it has a, uh, a it's detachable, and you've got this little connector, we don't know what yeah. that is, you know, those kind of things. All right. So the first target, the, uh, the Dell, uh, internal USB, match on chip, supports Windows Hello and Linux. Um, our goals are essentially uh, first looking at the configuration. What do the drivers look like? What is the config on, uh, you know, on the Windows side? Um, examine what was available of the Linux drivers. Um, try to observe the host to sensor communications and try to make sense of that. Uh, kind of you know, reverse engineering a proprietary protocol. Um, and then re focusing on reverse engineering the drivers to build a bigger, bigger picture. Potentially the firmware as, as well. We'll get into that a little bit more. The firmware uh, we didn't focus on as much with this particular research uh, reversing because all of the firmware blobs were encrypted. There are ways that we could potentially get the keys out of the sensor, but uh, we, we focused instead on, uh, on the host side and, uh, and the protocol. Yeah, so as mentioned, the Linux driver, the Windows driver, we're do doing pretty much the same thing. And we wanted to analyze if there are any differences because we know for sure Windows side did SDCP the secure thing on the Linux side? It really didn't. So let's see. You know, to recap, uh, what did the Windows side do? It, so yeah, go ahead. It follows the SDCP. This is the same image we showed earlier. It follows exactly this uh, what the SDCP documentation says it should do. 
Unfortunately, it, the Linux side yeah. doesn't support SDCP, right? Yeah. So that was the implementation. They basically deleted everything that's secure related to the security. So this is where we have the this is fine meme, but we had to have uh, legal, I think, pulled all those things out. Um, <laughs> so yeah, all the security, they, they implemented the rest of the protocol except for the security. Yeah, right? and one thing to note here is that uh, on the sensor side, they also changed things. It did no longer validates the ID, which was mentioned that uh, is actually enforced by SDCP that it needs to be validated to get something rolled in. And basically, this means that on Linux side, we can enroll anything with any ID we want. Yeah. So basically, we, as looking at this, we have an idea. We, we think, okay, so the sensor is holding the templates. The, on the Windows side, the IDs are generated cryptographically um, and then stored into uh, the template database. But with Linux, we can give it whatever we want. And so we can potentially uh, take list the IDs that are in the database, enroll an attacker's fingerprint as the spoofing that ID, give it on, through the Linux driver, store it into the database, and, and we're golden. Then we can authenticate as the authenticate, I mean, the, the, new the target user with an attacker's fingerprint, right? So we thought this is like how the implementation looks like. Yeah. Unfortunately, <clears throat> it wasn't work. like that. Yeah. No. Um, so the chip actually uh, has two separate databases. Uh, there's a, a Windows side to support SDCP, and the ID generation is actually, the, the cryptographic ID generation is enforced. So if it's yep. going through the Windows SDCP, um, it, it stores it in a separate database. There is a little bit of weird data like leak, but we won't <laughs> go into that. Um, and then there's a separate uh, non-Windows or Linux template database um, where if you're authenticating on the Linux side. So we couldn't just enroll on the Linux side and off on the Windows side. Um, but then we started thinking, okay, how, how does the sensor know which database to use, Linux or Windows, right? Yeah, so turns out in the very beginning of the handshake, there's one config packet it sends. There's uh, one byte that tells which database to use. Yeah. So, when, when the sensor is plugged in or the, the host comes up, a configuration packet goes across with a number of different config details, including like how sensitive should we be as far as the, the fingerprint, things how like that, used, yeah. uh, but what database to use. And so there's a, the, a flag for Windows or a flag for the, the non-Windows database. Um, and this packet is not authenticated, right? No. Yeah. Of course not. So anybody have any ideas? <laughs> Uh, so, in basically, here's, uh, here's this, this packet. Basically, when Windows comes up, a config, config packet says use the Windows database, and so the, the sensor is using the Windows database. And that's, um, that's not per uh, other operation, that's one time per, uh, per boot, basically. Yeah. Um, so then it's persistent. Um, so it's authenticated, the enroll and the identifier are authenticated then against the Windows template database. Um, again, um, the, the identification, this is just a, a refresher from what we, we talked about before. Um, so the question then became like, on the Linux side, uh, what would happen if we have SDCP uh, connection established and we would do identify, would the sensor calculate the actual Mac regardless of which database was used to, to authenticate against? Yeah, so that's the, right, so basically, if we can get, if we can rewrite the config packet and uh, enroll our fingerprint with the right ID um, into the Linux side and then rewrite that config packet so that the Windows side is actually pointing at the Linux uh, database, would this still happen? Would the Mac actually still happen so that, uh, so that Windows would appropriately authenticate? Um, and the answer is yes, it does. <laughs> so um, we, we were able to prove that out. Um, how, how did we prove that out? So you actually did some uh, deep winpack magic to, we, we reversed the location where the config packet is uh, constructed. Uh, we hooked it up and modified that one bit and then, you know, let things go. And we had basically Windows identify against the Linux database. Right. And a scotch at that time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so so we, we have a, an end to end. We've proved out that you can enroll an attacker's fingerprint as a, a target user in the Linux database. We can rewrite the config packet to point Windows to the Linux database, and then you can authenticate. Unfortunately, I mean, this is, it's, it's all proven out, uh, but 
like it's, Timo said, we're doing this in a debugger as far at this point in order to, to hook that, uh, that packet and rewrite it. Mm -hmm. So all we have left is really just to weaponize this, right? Yep. All we need is a USB man in the middle so that we can, between the sensor and the, um, and, and the target host, uh, rewrite that packet, um, and, then, and then we're done. Yep. Um, so just to recap the Vuln chain here is there's an info leak. Um, we enumerate what templates are in the database, the, the fingerprint database, um, and then we can arbitrarily write to the Linux side, and then we can point Windows to the Linux side and authenticate as that user, right? Yep. Um, so, okay, next so we already talked about yeah. that. So, so USB research. <laughs> we basically looked into what's the big thing, how to do a USB man in the middle. You found a USB proxy, but it was kind of dead. <laughs> yeah. So the thing at the time was great fit one and face tensor as soft software stack yeah that's basically kind of like you know usb research uh like tooling and things like that um this is where everybody kind of uh it, it seems like the hotness right now right yep. um there's a, a a cool demo video it makes it really easy with face dancer um to uh to to midum something you mm -hmm. you use the great fet and with face dancer with python you can basically just observe packets and then rewrite them there's a a demo where I think they they are uh, inverting the controls on a Nintendo Switch um, in line, and so they yep. made them the, the protocol between the, the controller and the Switch. So, sold. We bought one. Yeah. So we hooked we did it, it, hooked it up, wrote the exploit. Did the real hardware, quick. Did, did the hardware development to actually adjust the voltage? <laughs> yeah. This is so we had to. We this is embedded USB, so we did have to do um, a bit of Frankensteining and a bit of hardware reverse engineering to figure out. Okay, how can we rehost it? To, yep. to be able to be hot, you know yep. pluggable, so we, we can yeah. we did that. We connected. It should work. It did not even connect, and yep. we're like, <clears throat> it's supposed to work. It's not working. Mm. What's the problem? Yeah. And we dig deep down into the USB. Yeah. And turns out in in the USB bulk transfers, there's a thing called zero length packet, and apparently none of the developers get that right. What it means? Uh, it's when the window, when the host is talk, uh, reading data from USB device, it will tell how, uh, what is the maximum length of that transfer it can accept. If it's something small, say 64 bytes, then you just get one USB packet back and that, that's it. If it's going to be long, like 16 or 30 kilobytes or something, the maximum length, then the device can keep sending packets uh, of maximum length. It's always maximum length until the final packet. If it's less than maximum length, then it's like, indication that this is end of the transfer. And if the, it happens that what's being received actually aligns up with the maximum length, in that case, a zero length packet is sent to, in, sent to indicate that, okay, this is the end of the transfer. If you would not send that zero length packet, that the USB transfer would time out and it would re return error condition all the way back to the drivers and nothing works. That's what ha was happening. The face and share software was not sending, pa passing through the zero length packets. And it was also not really uh, handling the, the whole transfer thing at all. It was handling packets only. And if, you know, we had like really, really long transfers and we really wanted to uh, go and mit do the midterm stuff on, on a transfer layer, not on the packet layer. Yeah, so the state of USB research tools right now is, is pretty poor. Um, and it, we found out under, against like real targets, it it's just doesn't work very well, like, at least what we were yeah. trying to do. Um, so we had to kind of invent our own. Yeah. Um, so instead, we actually uh, did it ourselves uh, using a Raspberry Pi, and we'll get yeah. into, okay. into we that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, this is just the overview of our attack. We rewrite the config. Um, and, uh, and then the identify goes against the, the Linux template database instead of the Windows template database. Okay. So we're gonna demo that. So <clears throat> we've got a bit of a Frankenstein. We'll try to see if everybody can see here. But... Um, Do we take the whole thing? <laughs> sure, yeah. I disconnect this one. Yeah. Okay. So. Oops. Okay. So, like we said, we had to rehost the <coughs> the internal USB uh, to be able to plug it into the external, so that we can use our our midum. 
Um, right now, we just have this so that we can start the attack. But uh, really, this is not a, none of this kind of open Frankenstein-y stuff is, uh, is really necessary. You could just uh, take, uh, take a machine and pop open the bottom, extract the, uh, the actual sensor itself, uh, and plug it into this rig. Uh, so what we're going to do here first is we're going to log in, and we're going to set up our fingerprint. Oh, I'll be okay. oh. We've got to probably sh show people. Yeah, type in. So it's empty, and now we just add my victim finger. All set. Okay. So. <clears throat> Now we can lock, where is it? And just, um, I, let's see, I'll, I'll log in as, as the attacker. Nope. I'm, I'm not legit. I'm still Timo good. is. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take, unplug our fingerprint sensor and plug it into Man in the middle. <laughs> We're gonna have to switch this around, but our little man in the middle device here. <clears throat> and I'm going to enroll my fingerprint. Now we wait a second. <clears throat> so now my fingerprint has been enrolled. Um, the, our Midim is now plugging it back into the Windows host, so completing the, the uh, connection here. And then, oh. <laughs> so, authentication bypass. All right, sweet. One demo worked. Yeah, that's cool. I guess we can go One home. out of three. <laughs> That's All right, bad. yeah. Cool, so we had uh, one target done. So on to the next target, right? Yep, that was the synoptics one. Yeah, so this is again, this is the ThinkPad. Um, this one again, match on chip. Uh, limited Linux support, uh, encrypted communication between the host and the sensor, um, and also encrypted firmware. So um, made like firmware reverse engineering a little bit more, I mean, more difficult. Um, we had to focus on uh, reversing the, the Windows drivers and, the, and try to see what we could understand about the, uh, uh, the on-the-wire USB traffic, right? Yeah, so basically um, we had the same idea, same approach as uh, with the GoodX one. We just reversed the protocol. Uh, turns out it's encrypted by TLS, the actual protocol between the Windows driver and, and the sensor itself. Um, in the beginning there's something unencrypted, but after that it's like TLS. And basically that means we need to somehow break TLS to be able to look in, into the data what we have. Uh, we are not going to go too much in detail here. Uh, There's a lot of work here. So this was the bulk, actually, yeah, of I mean, our, our research was most of our time. very in-depth reverse engineering the protocol and the driver. Um, there was a lot of, with each of these, we also, in order to understand the USB protocol, had to uh, develop custom Wireshark dissectors in order to be able to visualize. We'll, we'll show some of that in a mm -hmm. second. Um, with this one, because it's a TLS, a custom TLS, we also had to uh, develop, uh, you know, basically the ability in in, in Wireshark yeah, the dissector. So the yeah. first thing was to ha we we needed to extract the TLS case. How how did we do that? Uh, so basically, yeah, that was uh, you know dynamic instrumentation using using like Frida in order to extract the master keys in order to to yeah. So we be able to, yeah. we took USB captures and then we had tooling to extract the TLS keys so we could like decrypt on on the Wireshark to see what's going on inside. This is like couple of screenshots what happens or like how, how the protocol looks like. Uh, this is the response to the initial uh, reading. The 
Ac actually, it was pretty clever how, how the Synaptics does the, the connection between the driver and host. On the very initial time it's connected, they do pairing. Uh, and uh, the host will have the sensor write a certificate back to the host. But because uh, both the Windows driver and then the BIOS implementation of the same thing, they needed to talk to the sensor in, in a trusted way, they actually ended up putting the, the private key and the certificate signed by the sensor to a flash block inside the sensor in an encrypted way. And that, that's a dump of the reading of the flash data. It's being decrypted here as well uh, to show that there's the private key certificate and things like that. So just to reiterate, we had, there's this custom TLS stack, um, but it's also not, it's broken. Um, yeah, so that's shown here. Yeah. Uh, when the TLS is started, there are certain elements uh, in, in the tag, tags that are broken. Uh, and it turns out that in, in the key derivation as well, they mixed up some things. That's, you know, if you do, the, you know, crypto yourself, always verify against third party. They didn't do it, obviously. So, you know, they just implemented the broken thing on both sides. And then we just needed to re-implement the whole TLS in Wireshark to be able to see what's going on. Yeah, so so unfortunately, the, the crypto breaking there, the, the, the implementation problems, didn't lead to a, a break in the crypto. Yeah. But what it did prevent us from was using things like OpenSSL or just standard TLS yeah. libraries in order to uh, to, yeah. to perform our attack or to dissect, uh, to hook through, you know, with like Wireshark dissector. So had to re-implement their broken stack in both of our, our exploit and the in the Wireshark dissector. Yeah. yeah. Well, finally, uh, the identify response is here. Uh, that's from the default install of the device, and you can see there's SDCP length zero. Uh, SDCP was not turned on, <laughs> and it just need, knowing the SID was enough to. Uh, be identified. Yeah. So, kind of, hmm? so, so going through this, this whole time, um, I mean, we were under the impression that this, uh, this target had to be SDCP. I mean, yeah. that's what we, that's what and we understood. That's also what the Windows Hello team understood. We were, we were on the phone implied. with them and things and the reversing, the, all the, the SDCP stack is all there. Um, but we just were not seeing the communication of SDCP. And so we kept digging, going back to the Windows Hello team, things like that. Um, Turns out that um, the uh, the stack is there. It's it has the ability. It's just not turned on by default, right? Yep. Um, so we we had to do a bunch of you know code coverage in order to figure out finally like yeah no this isn't yeah. getting hit. We, we know how to turn it on now, but uh, yeah. for the purpose of the engagement, yeah, it was off. <laughs> yeah. So we basically then had same idea as before. Yeah, so essentially um, the, the same kind of attack where SDCP is not actually in, um, in the mix here. So as, so as long as we can talk to the chip and, and establish a TLS session, then everything beyond that, that is the authentication between the host and the chip. So the driver and the, and the chip assumes that the only thing that can talk to the chip is you know, uh, the, the established yeah. driver. If you know the private paired key, then you're good to go. Right, so be, why, how did we get the key? Well, um, it's encrypted. And if you know the symmetric encryption key, you can get the key. Yeah, yeah, so what does that symmetric key derive uh, from? It's taken from BIOS because both the Windows and BIOS needs it. So they just took the BIOS uh, product name and product serial number. Right. So Is how that. could we find the serial number? It's easy. We, you know, we can read them from, uh, using code. But uh, what if I don't have physical access to boot? Oh, yeah, it's right here, right? Oh, yeah, it's there printed <laughs> on the laptop. <clears throat> yeah, we, we are good to go even on like external device. Yeah, yeah. So. We had um, another attack. As, as long as we could talk to the chip, build up a, a valid TLS session, um, then we, we should be good as far as uh, enrolling our own fingerprint as the victim and, uh, and then authenticating as the victim, right? So yeah. let's demo that yeah. or... Yeah. So there was one slide, but we explained it. So <laughs> uh, we are running out of time, so let's demo. <laughs> We had about five hours of content here, so um, we had to slash quite a bit. <laughs> but okay, so I actually just enrolled my own finger here um, as the victim user, and I'll show that I, um, in this case, Timo cannot authenticate his finger. No, no, but I can. Right? Okay. So now I'm off. <clears throat> so. 
as an attacker, what we're going to do is we're going to. So for this this demo, we could just take the thing out and rehost it on another computer. Uh, we did not have two computers here with us, so we are booting to Linux here. That's yeah. where our uh, custom code to talk to the chip is. So we're rebooting, and we just have a Linux partition. Again, like Timo said, this could be a uh, a USB stick to boot over to Linux, or just take the the chip out and plug it into another machine. But we're going to boot into Linux. That's gonna take a while. Then. So how about we show the other demo while the thing is booting? Yeah, sure. This one was the. Um, uh, again, we were kind of uh, afraid because it's the, uh, the the Windows Surface. It um, had this proprietary, you know, bus yeah. and things like that. Um, so we kind of pushed this off to the side. We really didn't have much time. Um, we we had like just a few days left on on the the final target. Yeah. Um, Well, basically, the Elon chip, uh, if I explain that briefly. Uh, there you go, where are you? Ah, okay. roll yours. Okay. All right. A little bit slow today to wake up. Not enough coffee on, on the computer. Did you pass that yesterday? Huh? Did you pass that yesterday? Uh, no, we have not passed this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it. You want to talk about the, the last yeah, one? So it's also a chip, chip uh, like we showed. Custom uh, bus, custom hardware connector, Microsoft branded. Looked like uh, we cannot have the tooling on. Get it on. Um, turns out um, the protocol between these guys is fairly simple. It did not have SDCP on, and uh, it's basically the discussion is like, do you know this SID? It's basically to make sure that it's talking to the right type cover. If the sensor says yes, uh, the driver will ask how many fingerprints you have. I guess that's kind of like anti-tamper detection thingy. So Make that, sure that you can't yeah. uh, you plug swap, it into another. Covers, yeah. Yeah. Both of these are related to that. And then finally, the identify is just sending back uh, the SID it matched, which we know from the beginning. So <clears throat> could possibly anything go wrong? Yeah, we basically can just record the SID. Uh, then we can query the fingerprints if we want. and. In the final identify, we know what to send back if we want to spoof that. But uh, oh, oh, another off bypass. Yep. <laughs> now, <clears throat> for the final target, uh, it turns out, you know, software wise, it's the simplest thing to do. And we already built all the USB gadget stuff to do man, man in the middle and other things. So we were like, OK, we just take that and you know, make it talk this uh, other protocol. Uh, it didn't work. <coughs> Turns out that um, in, on the USB device de descriptor level, there's a bit that says it can do wake up of the device. And the Linux kernel does not support that for the gadget mode. So it did not accept that. And we had to actually go and you know, figure out other APIs, like the raw gadget driver to implement the same thing on Raspberry Pi. Uh, unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi boots like a minute or two, and we knew we are going to run out of time. So we implemented the thing on a USB armory, 
in Tamago, so we can make it run fast enough here. <coughs> so we have a surface, there's one finger enrolled, uh, you can see. And uh, it's a complicated the, exploit. It's a complicated exploit, there's two pieces to it. The driver does not handle if there's two sensors connected. <coughs> step one, we remove the type cover. And step two, we connect the... The hard part is finding that, stick it in. <laughs> so, if you lost your finger, we can borrow the stick for you. On sale. So, so what did we learn? Uh, we learned that the uh, the landscape is pretty pretty diverse with uh, fingerprint auth rate. Um, we we ended up with uh, full authentication bypass on all three targets, which which yeah, we'll take. Pretty yeah. Good. Yep. Uh, there's definitely an inconsistency between vendors, right? That's yeah. uh, there was um, a difference in code quality, and uh, it, it seems like a misunderstanding of SDCP uh, by developers. Lots of uh, logical issues. Also, just that uh, the, most of these sensors support other OSs, not just Windows. Uh, again, SDCP is quite narrow in, in what it's trying to protect. So you've got all this other attack surface of uh, commands or APIs that are also supported by the sensor um, that uh, that lead to you know potential issues. Yeah. Um, the also unauthenticated attack surface, you know, not authenticated by SDCP. Yeah. Um, so basically, you really need to know that SDCP is enabled. It's always not obvious, but uh, there's instructions, and I think in the newer versions of Windows like 11, it's better. This was on Windows than what we did. Right. Um, and so, yeah, as, as far as from a future work perspective, um, from the hardware and firmware research perspective, uh, there we, we also noticed a number of things that we didn't really get to dig into a lot in this, in this uh, work. So um, the firmware seems pretty brittle in general. Mm -hmm. um, lots of potential for memory corruption at the, at the sensor side itself. It, it, you look at it funny and we, it crashes. We made the sensors boot many times during yeah, yeah. research. Um, also, the potential for hardware vulnerabilities put the secrets at risk. So while SDCP prescribes certain specific things, um, there's always a potential where you could read, I mean, uh, debug with JTAG or uh, decap the chips uh, in order to extract or insert yeah. secrets, um, directly devices. access yeah. storage, things like that. Um, also, there's not anything prescribed to, to uh, have security between the actual sensor itself and the onboard SOC, right? So there's the potential there for a, you know, a minimum. Also, other targets, um, you know, Linux kind of supports fingerprint <laughs> stuff too. That's uh, story <laughs> different. <laughs> and um, an Android and Apple, that kind of thing. So I want to thank everybody, um, the Morse team, for uh, sponsoring this work and also letting us talk. A lot of times yep. we don't usually. Uh, get the opportunity to talk about some of the stuff that we do. And so uh, this, it was great to get the green light for that. Um, the Windows Hello team too were great um, as, throughout the, this process. And then um, our, our team as well, um, some others like uh, Chris Williams, Ricardo. Um, so yeah, thanks to, okay. to everybody involved. And um, I, that's what we had today. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah, thank you.